everybody. So uh, one of our tech guys, Conrad, was out and about doing some work, and he found this leopard on his way home. So myself and Ferg came out, and Ferg expertly spotted him from his perch, and then here he is. Now we're debating who this beautiful male leopard is sitting here on top of this termite mound in the Sabi Sands in South Africa. I'm actually getting a feeling that it might be Hasana, but you all know the spot patterning a little bit better than I do, so I would like to know what you think. He's definitely full, whomever he is, but Tingana was also seen. Ferg, how's it, Ferg? Ferg's Hello. giving you the salute. Actually, we're in the car, so you're supposed to salute like this. Oh, and. Uh, We're going to have some interesting little scenarios with uh, the camera work today because it felt like rain, so we had to put the roof on, so we have these poles around. For now, as long as he stays where he is, we have this excellent, excellent view that I am very happy with, as I hope you all are happy with as well. So no spots this morning, but we're starting, well, I should say rosettes. No rosettes this morning, but we're starting out well with rosettes this afternoon. And I'm really hoping that Scott, man, look at his little tongue sticking out. That's quite a big dewlap, though. Although Hasana has gotten big in the past few months. We're just going to have to wait and see. Side of the main road. He is maybe... 10 meters from us, which would be about 10 yards for those who don't do metric. And yes, it is absolutely incredible. A little bit, and we'll start from the beginning. Leopards are one of the big five. The big five are the five most charismatic. high population densities of leopards. The leopards that we usually see on Safari Live include Tundi and her new little cub that we're guesstimating is about six weeks old or so. Uh, we also see Shadow and her youngster who is just about a year, just under a year. She'll be a year in February, I believe. We see um, Kachava and we also see Tamba. They are sister and brother and they are um, Tundi's some of Tundi's litters. Then we also see Hosanna, who's one of uh, Karula's youngsters. Karula's no longer with us, but those of you that have been with the show um, would remember her. I also remember her from some freelance work I used to do in the Northern Sands and also coming here as a guest. And then we get Mvula, my favorite male leopard in the area. He has legs like a bulldog. He's got short little stocky legs. Um, he's also been around for quite a while. And a Tingana, as well as Quarantine, Mr. Q. And I'm trying to think if I've gotten everybody there. I think that's pretty much the leopards that we see in general. Now, there has been a sighting or two of an unknown male leopard in the area, and every now and then we get the Anderson male, but he's usually much farther south from us, and from I haven't seen him yet, and from what I've heard, he is rather large. So any of the viewers that have been watching for a long time, if I've missed anybody, please let me know. Um, and now we were talking about spot patterning with a leopard, and unfortunately his head is down, so I can't go through through too much without being able to show you, but I know many of the viewers that have been with us for a long time are amazing at doing those GIF, uh, those picture things, so if any of you would like to put up one of your personal favorite GIFs uh, detailing the spot pattern above the whisker line, that would be fantastic. There are some other people who do up a few of those, that would be great. And those are all personal details with the personal leopard up whisker line. He would also do a whole body length on the left and a whole body length on the right, including the tail, um, as well as those front face. leopards. Now, I've worked with trackers when I was guiding in the lodges, and I've worked with trackers who can tell from the prints themselves exactly who the leopard is, and that's a very specialized detail to be able to do. Now, we have one of the largest cats that we find in Africa. It's one of the top three large cats we find of the eight large cats in the world. We get a cheetah, leopard, and lion, but there are other predators around as well, some of them big and some of them small, and Taylor, who is up in 
to show you. So let's head on up to her while we wait to see what this male leopard wants to do. All right, so from viewers and then also from us in the vehicle, we have all decided that this is in fact Tingana, and we've moved around to a different spot, and he's lifted up his head, and his neck is way too thick as well to, to be Hasana. He also has blue-colored eyes. And then we were just busy talking about a spot patterning. So you can see on it is his right-hand side. You can see the top whisker. And then at the back, you can start to see more dots. Now, I've got a, a photo that I took of him a little while ago on the dashboard here, where you can see it just a little bit better. Um, basically, and then these dots are the ones that indicate who he is. So when you're marking this down, basically this is A, B, C, D, E, F, and he kind of has a G, but the F and the G blend in. So he has... One above um, B and C, go away little pictures, one above B and C, so that would be B slash C, and one ab above the C and the D, so actually two above the C and the D, you can see that there, and then sorry, A, B, C, D, E, and then one above the F, and then that bleeds into the ones above the G, so that's very distinctive on his right hand side. Now what you would do is you would have the actual, let's see if we can do this quickly. You would have an actual um, photo of a leopard with a face that's similar to this but more straight on. Okay, that's going to be his, his left hand side. So with the cat actually physically looking at you. So the nose would be in the center and then you would have his right hand side on the left and his left hand side on the right. And then you would dictate these spot patterns. So then here as well, you can see the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then he's got a B1, a C, 2, um, a D, E, 1, and then an E, 1, okay, roughly right around in there. So he's got a 5, I think it's a 5, 5 pattern on either side. I just want to double check as I say that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's got a five-five pattern, and that five-five pattern is unique to him. Um, sometimes you can have a zero-five pattern, or a one-one, or two-three. It's it's all dependent. So the five that you put in first is his right-hand side, but the left-hand side of your paper, and then uh, vice versa with with the um, right-hand side is actually his left-hand side on the paper, and then that's how you do it. The five-five, and then the A B C D E F G is just when you go into more detail. So he should technically be the only male, dominant male in this area uh, with that 5-5 five, five pattern. That's usually how it works. So from a mammal leopard to a Chelonian leopard, let's go say hello to Scott. He has decided to lift up his head for us, thank goodness. And he, every time the wind sort of blows around, he shifts about and looks. So even though I said earlier that his belly looks a bit big, because it does look a bit big to me, so he's definitely eaten um, I don't think he would be opposed to hunting in this weather. This is really great hunting weather. Um, it's not raining, but we think it might start raining again shortly, and it's nice and windy and slightly cool. So it means that he'll be able to move around and hunt without exerting himself, and uh, the wind will take away the ability. still with with that wind and he also trusts his eyesight a lot more than those prey species do notice how his eyes sit in front of his head very similar to humans it's predator vision in front there um, and the prey species have eyes that are more towards the size side of the head excuse me um, which means they do not have binocular vision like like this leopard does and he's actually positioned himself nicely we're near the road that takes us to the dam to Chitwa dam oh, beautiful boy you can see he's still got a little bit of a ginger there on the, the left foot, but he seems to be fine. Um, not really causing too much of an issue. That's a Please, everyone see that yellow under his tail? So those are large adult male sized testicles with that coloration that's there for a leopard. The the cub will obviously, if it is a male, will have um, a smaller size and, until they really fully drop and then he gets older. But that yellow coloration is a very distinctive, distinctive color. And that's what we're looking for underneath the tail. Once
posted a bit this morning for those that were with us this morning about how I think it's possibly a, a male cub and that's why and that's the color that I was picking up. Now, um, as I was saying, oh, really, sir, as I was saying before, we're close to the access to Chitwa Dam, so there should be some Impala around. Big negative. I do know there are a couple of times where we found him uh, having moved around close to one of the den sites. That cub is way too little. She does not want him near that cub yet. Um, if for some reason he decides that he doesn't think it's his, he'll definitely kill it. But I've also seen the father of fathers of, of leopard cubs kill and eat small cubs like that because it's good protein to put in their bodies. So um, no, she does not want to introduce. She's going to wait a long time. And sometimes they don't even introduce. Sometimes the mothers keep the cubs away from the father others for forever and um, sometimes when it's male cubs they also do that on purpose to keep the aggression uh, down from from the male so obviously that male cub when he reaches about two years old he's going to be kicked away from the mom because the mom's it's going to be time for her to have a new set of cubs and um, then he's either going to have to move on to try and find another territory or he possibly might take over his dad's territory and Tingana is coming towards the end of his reign and so that's definitely a possibility for for something like like that to happen and the older he gets and the smaller his territory gets because of increasing pressure from other male leopards he's going to be slightly more aggressive but again it's all based on personality so he might end up being a, a, a doting dad if he's ever around on a kill and remember we are in the sabi sands and it is high density area so we tend to see exceptions to the rule so we are you're going to hear a vehicle just now we've got a position themselves and having a look. Let's head back up to Kenya to my friend Ralph and see how he's doing. Please ask him how his Christmas went. I'm keen to know. That's a beautiful shot just before we head off. So, sorry Scotty D, I'm not Taylor. As you know, I'm Noelle. I saw you about an hour ago. Uh, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. I know that there's only so many girls out here in the world. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, Tingana really hasn't moved. He is so happy on top of his termite mound. He's probably a little bit warmer up there. He's camouflaged himself in nicely, and uh, he's got a nice little vantage point. There's a few Impala that are wandering around, and he's been keeping an eye on them, but not to the point where I think he's going to be doing anything anytime soon. I think if any of them do get closer than where they are now, it's definitely a possibility, but I really think he's just uh, enjoying the, the cooler weather and, and a little bit of a cat nap, excuse the pun. So carrying on with our leopard talk from earlier, so we've briefly talked about how they're part of the big five, and we've talked about how we do the spot patterning, or specifically how I do my spot patterning, and that comes from having worked with a leopard researcher. That's why I use that method, and that's the method that um, most of the people that I work with use. Um, I know that there's a few other ways that other people ID them, but that's the most sure surefire way. We we're going to see a vehicle just in the background there. That's one of the Chitwa Chitwa vehicles. We are on Chitwa Chitwa property, um, and they allow us to access their dam and to traverse on their property. Thank goodness it gives us a nice bit of space to move around. So just to excuse them in the background, the guests there are just getting a really fantastic view as they move around the termite mound. And notice how Tingana didn't twitch an ear even really. He is not phased by how, where that vehicle moved. I do know sometimes from the way that we, um, you can see see on screen people sometimes think oh my goodness what are you doing and you're close to that animal and this and that and trust me the animals will always let you know what their personal boundaries are Tangana is super super chilled out um, look if someone were to accidentally or on purposely get out of the car when he's that close then then he would have something to say about it because it's breaking the social contract so they know that we are individual humans in this big machine that moves around and part of their environment um, and uh, breaking the social contract would be to stand up and get out of that vehicle when close. It's a very different social contract to that of on foot because they can hear and sometimes see us coming beforehand, especially if they're a predator. Now, Ferg did a nice little view of the foot there with the pad and then up the body so you could see the, the lobes to the back foot, the three lobes on the bottom pad, and then the, some of the four toes. And then he came up, and you'll notice that there are rosettes and then spots as well. 
So we comment that um, cheetahs have spots and leopards have rosettes, but there are a few of wonky spots there on, on a leopard. Um, I believe it was Rudyard Kipling that wrote that story about uh, a leopard never changes its spot, and I've spent spots and I've sp spent my whole career saying, but they have rosettes. It's the cheetahs that have the spots. I wish we had a cheetah in the sighting with us so that we could do a nice live comparison, but unfortunately we don't. Maybe a Ralph or Taylor up in the Mara will manage to catch a nice uh, cheetah sighting for us. I'm Again, I'm jonesing for some cheetah this, this side. I have not seen cheetah, I think I'm going on four or five months now. It's too long. We, we They need to come over a little bit farther so that we can see them. Now he's got a few nicks and cuts in his ears there, but he's an older male. Uh, we're not 100% sure his exact birth date, but his roundabout age is 10 to 12 years old, and that's predicated on when he was first seen, the age roughly that he was when he was first seen, and then therefore roundabouts when he would have been born. That's a really great question. You're curious to know, is the leopard's paw skinny compared to a lion's? Now, the paw that Ferg is... back foot, uh, the, the pad there is longer than it is wide, so it is much thinner. Now, a leopard is much smaller than a lion, so yes, the prints are going to be smaller, but both of the back feet in relation to the body size, the, the, it's going to be longer and uh, than it is wide, whereas the front feet are width and length the same, and again, a leopard being smaller than a lion, the, the, the paws will be smaller, not, not necessarily skinnier. Now, a cheetah will have much thinner uh, prints in compared to a leopard and a lion because that's uh, the way the body structure is uh, but again the front paw is going to be relatively width and length the same and the back the the length longer than the width good questions everybody and don't forget, we are live, we are interactive, and for any of you that might be a silent viewer out there, or any of you that might be new viewers, come join us, send questions through or comments through, hashtag Safari Live on the Twitter, or if you want, on a YouTube chat. Now... I have been wanting to see a leopard all day, but I'm actually hoping that this leopard starts hunting soon. Oh my goodness, Tomer, you would like to know how many leopards live in the Greater Kruger. Fortunately, leopard population numbers are not known to the full extent, if at all, because of the elusive nature of them. I will say that in general, the Greater Kruger area, the Lofeld area, has a quite a high population density, but I personally could not give you a number. There might be a way to correlate between the different properties and the leopards we see to get some sort of a, a number out of it but we don't even know what the numbers are continent-wise. I do know there's a few statistics of leopards floating out there, but you really need to take them with a huge grain of salt um, just because of where they, they move and how they work and all the different people and the different research methods that are out there. Um, I can give you numbers in relation to sort of lion and cheetah and wild dogs if you're keen on that. So there's about 7,000 cheetahs. Greater Kruger area, if I'm remembering correctly, I think they're guesstimating um, around 300 roughly, but possibly lower. I've even heard counts around 200, again, depending on who you talk to. A wild dogs, we're looking at under 3,500 on, on the continent, more sub-Saharan Africa. I haven't heard of them occurring uh, north of the Sahara. And then in the um, greater Kruger area, we're looking at about 200, 250. And then for wild lions, we're looking at about 20,000 in sub-Saharan Africa. And in, in South Africa, about 5,000 wild lions. And I believe the greater Kruger has something like 2,000, 2,500 in the area. So those numbers are a little bit easier for me to give. And that just has to do, one, with the amount of research that's done on those species, but two, also, they tend to be a bit more out there and a bit more visible, um, just in, in the way that they, they function as creatures, and so it makes it a little bit easier to do uh, a census with them.
he is flat, flat, flat. We have another vehicle that's joining us in the siding, so just excuse the nose. Philip, good question you're asking. Aren't rosettes just clusters of spots? And um, I guess you could technically say that, but Philip, what we're going to try and do is just zoom in on some of these rosettes a little bit just to give you a better idea of what we're talking about. So now a spot is a round dot, yeah? So you can see there already there's not really rhyme or reason to any of the ones that are completely dark. But now a rosette is these wonky little blacks with a lighter color in, inside. So I guess you could technically say it's a bunch of, of spots that have bled together. Uh, so, somewhat, and then it's lighter in size. Um, I mean, six of one, half dozen of the other. other however, makes you happy to describe it. But for me, I, I sort of say it's an asymmetrical, um, sort of wonky little round bit <laughs> with a discoloration in the middle. Whatever makes you happy to say it, it's, <laughs> you're more than welcome. Tingana, my friend. I'm so happy that you're here, and I'm so happy that you've decided not to be your normal self. We are not do something magical like pick your head up or stalk some impala or maybe yawn and It also means you might start moving around. Scarlet, you want to know, is a leopard's fur really soft? Now, Scarlet, in a, the time when I was doing research in various different places, I was um, able to um, help the one of the women that I was working with, who was the head researcher, um, in darting and cataloging um, variations on leopard. And so I, I did uh, hand... not rough rough but it's not soft and they smell and um, they don't smell as bad as a lion and they certainly don't smell as bad as a wild dog but it's it's not super soft i know it looks soft but it also has to be able to protect them a lion's fur is also quite quite stiff and 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 hard i've done a bit of uh, relocation work with with them as well it's softer around the belly if that helps everybody we are only gonna get um, maybe about five or ten more minutes with him so I think let's maybe go have a, a look at what Ralph has up in the Mara and I oh I'm not gonna tell you it's such a super surprise and I'm ridiculously jealous right now because what he Buddy, all right. I'm just repositioning just a little bit. We are only going to be able to stay in the sighting for a couple of more minutes. We have to give some space to some other vehicles that are going to want to come in. So I just want to come around just to the other side, just so we can see his beautiful little face one last time. So just give me half a moment. Just before we got to you, he picked up his head and... Uh, and looked around at us and then of course just as we go live he puts his head back down so I'm just busy trying to give him a little bit of space I also don't want to get in the way of any of the photographs of any of the guests in the other vehicle as we come around I also don't want to knock Ferg off the car so we're just going to meander this way and um, get in for one or two more screenshots for all of you and then we will make our way on to something else now something I want you to notice there's a little bit of a, a pole that's in the way but you can actually see that rain that's starting to come down you can see that huge cloud that's moving and also <laughs> Ferg's got to move the moisture off the the screen so long so we're also about to get a soaking wet so I think from here we're going to zoom in we'll do a couple more beautiful shots of our boy here and then we'll make our way down to Chitwa Chitwa Dam and I'm very sorry to have pulled you away from your rhino with a Ralph up there in the Masai Mara but I was convinced that he was going to start moving because of this rain and he was giving all the signs and then he laid flat down so I think there we go Willow, who is three years old, would like to know if this is a daddy leopard. Willow, it is indeed a daddy leopard. Thanks for the great question, sweetie. I hope you're enjoying the show. Willow, what's your favorite cat? Is it leopard? 
maybe he'll pick his head up. You're going to hear another vehicle just now, and as they move away, sometimes he'll pick his head up, sometimes not. We'll have have uh, pushed our time as as much as we possibly can so i think rather than making these guys move too much i think we're also going to have to start making our way out it's been an amazing sighting with tingana i hope you've enjoyed as much as i have Nala, a leopard, is extremely strong. Uh, this male leopard can kill something uh, that, like a big giraffe baby, sort of about 100 kilograms, 120 kilograms, and and bring it up in, into a, a tree, several meters up a tree. So they are uh, quite strong. Um, I'm just letting these other guys, sorry, just as I was saying, we were leaving and getting repositioned, the, the other vehicles have moved. So I'm just going to let them reposition, and then we are going to move on. Just letting one vehicle move at a time so that the sound doesn't uh, bother him too much. And while we are busy doing this, let's head back up to the Maasai Mara to Taylor and see what she has to show us. And then hopefully as we carry on, we might find you another leopard or some lion or maybe something else. You never know. And then here we go. Our beautiful Tangana who has moved... Only several centimeters. <laughs> sort of its way around. Ah, oh, the unicorn. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. His belly, you can see his belly a lot better now. He's definitely eaten something. He's got a fat little belly sticking out there. One of the reasons why he's probably still resting here, although we were hopeful that he would start moving around, and the rain that we thought was coming went away. So I'm glad for game drive that the rain went away. I'm not glad for the bush that the rain went away. We do need some rain quite badly. Well, not quite badly, but we, we need some rain, that's for sure. Now, we were talking about the hind paws before there. You can see the front paw nicely, and you can see what we were talking about earlier in the show, where it is more round and width and length are the same, as opposed to that back paw that we saw earlier, where it is longer than it is wide. Beautiful. There's the three lobes on the bottom pad, and then one, two, three, four toes. And notice how you can't see any claws protracting. That's because uh, they only bring them out when they really need them, either in very slippery surfaces or mostly when they're hunting. And when those claws do come out, they get stuck into whatever they're hunting. It helps them bring down their prey. Lions would be the same as opposed to a cheetah whose claws are always protracted. And that's so that they can get to their top speeds very quickly. So a leopard speed would be over 100 meters, so about 100 yards. It would be 90 uh, kilometers an hour. That's about 23 meters a second, so roughly 23 yards a second. It's quite quick. And then a lion would be about 22.1 meters or 22.1 yards a second, roughly, and that's about... Um, uh, 80 kilometers an hour and then the cheetah does 120 kilometers an hour and now the lion and the leopard as I was saying they can only do that for about 100 meters about 100 yards uh, because they, they stalk and they're just much larger animals the cheetah has developed the special brain casing so they can do 120 kilometers an hour for up to and sometimes over a kilometer and that brain casing allows it so that they don't overheat now one of the reasons uh, why Tingana is resting the way that he is, is sometimes when they're very full like this, think about when you eat as a human, when you eat too much, your body temperature rises and it's your body trying to process all the food you've stuck in. So his body's doing the same thing. He's, he's trying to process all of that meat and he's going to be slightly warmer than normal. So if he wanted to move, it is nice and cool and uh, he, he would definitely not be as uncomfortable as opposed to yesterday, which was scorching hot and quite humid. At least he's twitching for you. All right, now Scott is ever hopeful that Madame Tandy will present herself with her cute little cub, so let's head on over to him and see what sort of an update he has in regard to that. 
Scotty D, I'm so sorry Tandy is not being nice to you. I think maybe we used up all of our leopard energy on Christmas, but I do hope she is the last minute leopard for us today. But it is true, we do have Tingana. Uh, just excuse the vehicle noise over to the side. Uh, the vehicle we've just run into is actually a friend of mine that I used to work with on another property. And I, I came into the sighting and as we went off, I was like, oh my goodness gracious, what are you doing here? He's also just moved into this area and enjoying himself. They've opened up brand new camp and his guests are having a fabulous time watching Tingana here. Thank you sir for picking up your head. That's exactly what we wanted. Beautiful. There we go everybody. Nice blue tinged eyes there. And now because my friend Murray has moved off we are going to just meander in a little bit. So if you would just excuse me for starting up the vehicle and um moving us around just so that we get a little bit of a different view and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come around and then I'm going to put the front of the vehicle uh, towards where Tangana is. It's pr probably one of the easiest um, ways of accessing a good look for you all when we have the roof on. Just a little bit of a reversing there and absolutely stunning. There we go. Thanks for biding your time with me as I do that. Sorry for the back of my head. Gorgeous. Now we can see him in all his splendor and glory. Yes, he is indeed, Nikki. He is a nice big cat. Tangana is a, is a big male. Not the biggest male I've ever seen, but he is a decent sized male. And he's been resting with his tongue hanging out like that for most of the time we've been seeing him as well. It's been cracking me up. I'm enjoying the contrast with his little pillow of a uh, of a termite mound there and the the slate gray sky in the back is giving those green tinges uh, quite a dark color bad andy you're saying tingana is a beast yeah he is a beast he's a big boy look at that fat belly i mean you can see it really nicely there oh thank you and for picking your head up and not for too long we just have our friends from juma have just come and joined us again they also wanted a second look at tingana because no one can ever get enough of this beautiful leopard he really has managed to find himself a pillow this is hysterical Mary, Mary, you're saying you're enjoying that cute little tongue as well. Yeah, I don't know if we can call Tingana cute, but I think I think we can go with cute tongue. What'd you say, Ferg? He's a cute man. He is. Ferg says yes, he is cute. Half eye open, ear always twitching. It's interesting when cats are sleeping; they're not necessarily fully asleep. I have seen cats go into that sort of uh, REM sleep, the dream, where they're you know running around and and um, moving their legs a little bit. But in general, I've seen that more with uh, with lions, particularly big male lions. With with leopards, uh, you tend to see a bit more awareness. Not just because they're of the apex predator; they're a bit smaller than a lion. And they're aware of it. They're also uh, very aware of the fact that they can eat multiple different creatures that are moving around. Uh, we've talked about it before, but for anyone that's new with us, sort of from scorpions to baby mice, up through impala and warthog, nyalas, uh, kudus, and then even up into sort of small baby-sized giraffe. Uh, so they're, they're constantly, even though he's full like this, he might still do a bit of hunting. And it is impala lambing season and wildebeest calving season, so there's lots of tasty morsels around. Now, as I'm talking about antelope species, I remembered that I promised to show you what a chems book was. So I've got my mammal book here for you to have a look at chems book. <clears throat> we don't bless you, Ferg. Bless you. We don't see Ham's book this. So for the last little bit that we have with our safari this evening, we are just going to stick here with Tingana. He has managed to stick his head behind the termite mouse. We can't really see it. It looks like a little bit like a headless leopard. He is still alive. You can see him breathing. That nice little golden light that you see appearing on him is the spotlight from the fellow vehicle that is with us. And he is perfectly able to spotlight this as it is a nocturnal creature who can see at night and during the day. Annie, you're curious to know, 
does the rain ever bother the leopards or do they enjoy it? Annie, this tiny little bit of drizzle isn't going to bother anybody. The downpours have a tendency to bother the cats more. But what you'll notice, especially if you've seen other shows with us, is downpours here in the sands. The cats tend to hide a bit more. But then up in the Mara, where Taylor and Ralph are, when it starts to downpour, because it's such a more open ecosystem and they get those big rains and little rains throughout the season, that you tend to see a bit more cat movement in those downpours. So those are just regional variations within the species that happen, obviously just uh, getting used to their different ecosystems. So he'll be fine for now, but if it really starts coming down, he's going to find a little bush to hide underneath. Arishi, you're curious to know if Tingana is risking himself for an attack by sleeping in the open. Arishi, because he's not fully asleep, he's just resting. Um, no, not necessarily, but I mean, the wind is gusting. It's possible that something like a lion could sneak up on him. It does happen. Nothing is impervious to, to the, the workings of mother, mother nature. And we all can't live forever. Leopards and lions and humans and everything else included. So in general, I'm going to say no, he is pretty aware, but you know, it could, today could be the day. And uh, from the other side of the termite mound, I can't see anything, so anything could happen. The bush is sneaky like that. Well, life in general is sneaky like that. Good questions, guys. Keep them coming. We only have a little bit of time left. Let's see if we can squeeze in a few more questions on our interactive Safari with Safari Live. Don't forget, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or send through on the YouTube chat. Oh my goodness, and as I say that, we only have a minute left with all of you, so let's have a beautiful look at these paws. First lady, first lady, you're curious to know if Tangana's ever killed a leopard. I would assume in his 10 to 12 years he has, but I can't answer that for definite. I don't know if we've caught anything live on camera before with him with any sort of crazy interaction like that. Most of the interactions I've heard about with him have been, I wouldn't say peaceful, but have been more understanding. Um, so, but it would be interesting to know. I'm sure when Tristan's back from leave, he'll definitely have an idea if Tangana has uh, killed anything, any other leopards along the way. So everybody, here we go. Our last little view of our rosetted, beautiful boy, Tingana. It would be nice if he decides to lift up his head. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Tingana. Thank you all very much from all of us. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your Boxing Day. We'll see you tomorrow.